everyone. My name is Emily and I'm the young adult librarian at the Rock Island Public Library and this month's book talk is Temple Alley Summer. And this is a book I really enjoyed. Uh, it came out I believe in 2022. Let's oh 2021. Uh, originally published in Japan though in 2011 and this is a book I enjoyed last summer. I wanted to bring it in book talk form to you before the summer ends uh, because it is a very sort of quintessential summer tale in the sense that uh, in Japan summer is the time for ghost stories and this is a book that begins in July and ends in August which is the Oban season. Um, I mean typically I guess it can be mid-July or mid-August like this year it is mid-August uh, but the book begins with Kazu and one night in July, he is at home and he's eating watermelon, that quintessential summer snack, and he's watching uh, the ghost story shows. Like they come on at seven and this is just what is on. Like this is, uh, you can expect this type of programming in the summer in Japan. And right away Kazu says, um, I'm a scaredy cat. Like I have no business watching these shows. I know that. but. Um, <laughs> like the kinds of stories you get these things, dishes rattle in a hotel late at night, though no earthquake registers, a ghost with long hair keeps pace with a car doing 40 miles per hour, a hand appears forming a V over the middle person's head whenever three people have their photo taken at a certain scenic spot. Could it happen? And so he's hooked. And it was a ghost story marathon. It's three hours. And finally his older sister says, Kazu, you better quit it. And don't come crying to me in the middle of the night asking me to take you to the bathroom. And she just like, you know, looks at him like, you dumb little brother. And I mean, he's in fifth grade, she's in seventh grade. And because of this, they're, they're pretty close in age. And so Kazu does that classic kid thing where it's like, all right, you told me not to do this. I, I'm going to double down. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and watch these scary shows on TV. And also I'm going to have another slice of watermelon. And he does. He has a fifth slice of Again, quoting the book, bladder loading watermelon to prove it. Like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna go running to my sister scared tonight. Well, next sentence is, I should have known better. And what happens is he wakes up and it is clearly, I mean, it's dark out. It's not anywhere close to morning. He looks at the clock, sure enough, it's not even 4 a.m. And Kazu really, really, really has to pee. And he goes on to explain, like his family, they live in this old house. And the way it's set up is, all right, his parents have been saying for years, oh, you know, we're gonna like kind of update the house at some point. But just this past spring, Kazu's grandpa has died. And so the family has had other stuff going on. So right now there's no bathroom up on the floor where Kazu's bedroom is. Instead, he'd have to walk downstairs and get to another part of the house and it's very dark and it's that thing of all right well i gotta pee but i'm scared because it's dark and i just watched all those ghost stories right before i went to bed and it doesn't help that i mean kazu has a solution to this problem and the solution is simply this as a kid i mean he, he learned years ago he can just pee out his window because their house doesn't face the street. They have their own little courtyard. This is sort of a house where it's almost like a U-shape. So you have, all right, uh, house, house, just, you know, in this sort of thing where he's facing a part of the house where nobody is going to be looking out the window in the middle of the night. And also nobody's bedroom's over there. And to make matters even better from Kazu's perspective, it's raining a little bit. There's a light rain coming down. So Kazu's like, Okay, well, I'm not going to get caught. Like, he's been caught before in the winter. His mom has, like, seen the yellow on the snow, and she puts two and two together. Like, hey, don't do that. Don't pee out your wind. Like, I, I'm not okay with this. Come on. But, I mean, okay. Kazu, he's able to just open the window, pee out the window. And when he gets done, you know, he's shutting his window. And then he looks, and he sees a door open downstairs. Again, uh, this is like, he, he sees uh, an opening in the fading curtains behind the sliding door. I saw a pale foot, a child's foot. My sister's? Not possible since she was asleep in her bedroom. I would have heard her if she'd used the stairs. And her feet are tan, not pale. She, she swims on the swim team, so her legs are darker than mine. Then I saw a figure step from behind the curtains, wearing a kimono, a white one. And you see her here. So this is the girl that Kazu sees. And 
Now, like, okay, the sky has brightened up just enough. The rain has kind of died down. So he can see that she's wearing, like, these red baubles in her hair. And her face is hidden. She's looking down. Well, I mean, Kazu jumps to the conclusion that a lot of fifth graders would in this situation. Oh my gosh, there's a ghost in my house. And he yells and he wakes up his family and his mom and sister in particular are annoyed. Like, hey, it's the middle of the night. What are you yelling about? And eventually somebody does go downstairs and check. And sure enough, well, there's a door open, but it's like, okay, somebody just probably forgot to close the door. Like, I don't think you really saw a ghost. And Kazu's dad is like, hey, um, are you okay? You know, just don't worry about it. Like, these, these things happen. I, I know, well, he says, Kazu, are you okay? Can you get back to sleep by yourself? Do you want me to stay? It's like, oh, my only ally. But then he tells his parents, oh, I'd fall asleep on my own. But he knows what he saw. And sure enough, he lays awake for a long time. Well, the next day, I mean, it's still raining when Kazu goes to school. And they are in social studies class. Um, this is a thing they do sometimes where, all right, multi-grade activity time, that's what it's called. And this is a thing where kids from grades one to six break up into their neighborhood association groups instead of our grades. And the idea is, okay, younger kids are gonna spend time with older kids and learning how to succeed at school and developing respect. That seems to be the point of it, as far as I can tell. Mostly we do recreation, like dodgeball or demon tag. Today though, we had to stay inside. And because the gym is closed for repainting, they are stuffed into a conference room looking up old names for sites in our area. And it's like, ooh, a map from 1913. Okay. Like, some of the kids are like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And Kaz is just like, I'm not feeling this. I was up late last night, maybe seeing a ghost. But what happens is somebody's looking at this map. Oh, it's Yusuke. It's his best friend, Yusuke. And he says, hey, um... Kazu, you know, I found the street where your family lives. And, okay, Kazu's like, what, really? And it says your street is called Kimio Temple Alley, Yusuke added. What? And right away, I mean, Kazu's like, Kimio Temple Alley? I'd never heard of Kimio Temple. Like, I, I live in a house. I don't live in a temple. Why would the street be called that? Again, this is a map from 1913, long ago. So, he's looking at the map. Kazu at Yusuke's, you know, like, come on, just come look at this. So Kazu joins his best friend at the table, and then he sees the girl with the red baubles in her hair again. And again, didn't see her face last night, but he recognizes these things in her hair. And you can see, like, this is Kazu reacting. Like, here's the girl, and here's Kazu seeing her. And he tells Yusuke, like, that person, she's a ghost, a ghost. And Yusuke... I mean, he's kind of like pulling on his friend, like, hey, sit down, come on, what are you talking about? And again, the vice principal is supervising this uh, activity. So Kazu's trying not to freak out. He doesn't want to get in trouble, but at the same time, he knows what he saw. He knows he saw this girl sneaking out of his house last night. So Yusuke, his best friend, asks Kazu, what's the matter with you? And Kazu's like, why is that person here? And Yusuke says, who do you mean? The girl between that second grader, Tomohisa and Yamada's little sister, Akari Shinobu? Yusuke asked like it was no big deal. And Kazu was shocked, like, you know her? Yusuke frowned and poked me. He thought I was playing. It's Akari, dude. Akari, he repeated. That's her name? Kazu, what's wrong with you? Akari's in your class. So, here's the whole thing. Yusuke, he insists, like, okay, Kazu, did you hit your head? What's, what's going on, bud? Like, this person's gone to our school as long as we have. And for Kazu, this is weird because he, he doesn't know this person. He doesn't remember her. He's never seen her before last night. But Yusuke insists, and it's clear, like, when he talks to other people, like, everybody is treating this girl like, oh yeah, Akari, she's in our class. Like, nobody else is acting like anything is strange. And so Kazu quickly has to admit, okay, I'm the only person who has no memory of this girl ever being here before today. But everybody else thinks, oh yeah, she's, she's here, Akari goes to our school. And because it is summertime, um, Japan summer break doesn't last as long as summer vacations in the United States, but it typically does take place um, like late July, early August, kind of the Obon season. And so because of the fact that, I mean, Kazu is curious, obviously, what's the deal with this girl? And eventually he, he follows her home. Like they live in the same neighborhood. She lives very close by. 
And what he finds is um, he can hear somebody else in her house. Like, okay, maybe I am imagining this. Like, maybe there's nothing, like something weird is going on, but maybe it's not a ghost thing. But no, something is very strange because uh, Akari's mom is invisible. Like, when, when Kazu looks into her house, there's someone talking to her. He can hear a voice, and Akari is responding to this person, talking to them, but there's nobody else in the house. It's just her. And yet other people, again, they seem to be able to see this person, and they act like, oh yeah, I know Akari. She lives in this neighborhood. She's just one of the kids that lives around here. So eventually, I mean, these two talk, and Akari admits, yes, yeah, she is a ghost. And what she is dealing with is the fact that she doesn't know how she came back. But this whole thing with Kimio Temple is important, because apparently this was a temple where at one time there was a statue. And if you prayed to the statue, well, maybe somebody would come back from the dead. Now, it wouldn't be like a zombie situation. This would be somebody just one day, they're back. And they're in a different family, but somebody might recognize them. In this case, this girl died like decades before. Her mom is still alive, but her mom is an old woman. And now Akari's in this other family. I mean, in this house where she has an invisible mom. And what she remembers is, well, she was very sick for the, most of the time she was a kid. And what she wanted when she was dying was to finish this story. Like she was reading this story in a magazine and it was called The Moon is on the Left. And it was this weird story that took place long ago. The person telling the story ends up in this very creepy situation where they're trying to figure out, all right, well, how do I get out of this house in which I am trapped and free the other prisoners? Because there's like this jail in the basement and it's just this weird, creepy story that you, you can imagine a kid would enjoy it. Like, whoa, what is happening? I, wa I want to know what happens next. Well, eventually, uh, Kazu and Akari and Yusuke, they are able to find the author. The author is in fact a neighbor woman, like somebody who lives nearby in the neighborhood. She wrote this story and basically, I mean, they talk to her and Kazu gives her a hard time until she writes the rest of the story. Like she never finished it. The magazine went out of business before the story could reach its conclusion. Nobody else remembers that she just wasn't there before that one night when she appeared. Like nobody else knows she's a ghost. But now she's back. She's She has a new life and she's getting the second chance. And Kazu's trying to figure out, okay, but is she just going to disappear as suddenly as she reappeared in the world of the living? What's, what's going to happen? So if you like ghost stories, this book is a lot of fun. And again, you get a story within the story that's also a really interesting tale. So check it out. And thank you for watching. I will see you again soon.